Hello everyone, welcome to another video of this RFBT series. My name is Mark. Yes, I have a microphone. No, I don't have yet a microphone stand built up. And today we are going to talk about the Unclaimed Balances app. Now, have you ever wondered what would happen to your money, which you kept in a bank account, which you haven't touched for many years? If you think that it will accumulate interest and it will leave you with less of money, you could be wrong. You might be surprised that the government has already taken all of your money. So with that said, let's begin. All right, so again, we are going to talk about Unclaimed Balances Act. This is Act number 3936, not to be confused with the Republic Act number 3936. So Act number 3936 has been established into law in the year 1932. So it's a very old law. And it has been amended by Presidential Decree number 679, which was, of course, issued in the year 1975. So as of now, there still hasn't been a lot of changes with regards to this law. And so we have to stick with the provisions of it. Okay? All right. So for those of you who do not want to listen to the entire video, here's a summary of this law. This law authorizes the national government to take deposits of money, bullion, security, and evidence of indebtedness of any kind that are considered as unclaimed balances from banks, buildings and loan associations, and trust corporations, and appropriate the same for their own use. So it's one way for the government to take the money of the people, and it's a legal form of taking. However, they have to satisfy certain requirements before they can do so, and that's what we are going to discuss today. So before anything else, we have to define what the term unclaimed balances is. Unclaimed balances within the meaning of this act shall include credits or deposits of money, bullion, security, or other evidence of indebtedness of any kind and interest thereon with banks, buildings and loan associations, and trust corporations in favor of any person known to be dead or who has not made further deposits or withdrawals during the preceding 10 years or more. And this is according to Section 1 of the Unclaimed Balances Act. Now, things to note, the term unclaimed balances is not limited to bank deposits only. It generally refers to evidence of indebtedness of any kind wherein the bank, buildings and loan association, and trust corporation is the debtor. The coverage of the law is not limited to banks. It also covers buildings and loan associations and trust corporations, as what is stated in Section 1. Now, you might be wondering what building and loan association is. A building and loan association is an organization created for the purpose of accumulating a fund by the monthly subscription or savings of its members to assist them in building or purchasing for themselves dwellings or real estate by loaning to them the requisite money from the funds of the society. So the members of the association invest money into the same and the association will give them a money in the form of loan. So whatever they invested in, it will be returned back to them. And in a way, it is considered as an evidence of indebtedness because, of course, the association will be indebted to the person who invested in the organization. Now, what about a trust corporation? A trust corporation is an organization created to perform trustee functions. A trustee is a person, whether natural or juridical, who manages the money and property of the trustor in a trust agreement. Now, do take note that a bank can be a trustee. However, what we're talking about here when we talk about trust corporation is a separate corporation whose business is actually being a trustee to many trustors in a trust agreement. And another important thing to note with regards to the term unclaimed balances, in order for an evidence of indebtedness like a bank deposit to be considered as an unclaimed balance, 
there should have been no bank activity, whether in the form of deposit or withdrawal in that account for 10 years or more. So it's a long time that will have to pass before that account will be considered as an unclaimed balance. So now let's go to the definition of dormant accounts according to Banco Central ng Pilipinas Circular Number 928. It could either be one of the two things. The first one is it is a current or checking account showing no deposit or withdrawal for a period of one year. So after one year of inactivity, that current or checking account will be considered as a dormant account. Compare that with a savings account. For savings account that has no deposit or withdrawal for a period of two years, it will become a dormant account. So things to note with regards to dormant accounts, if you're going to ask how many years a dormant account will have to undergo in order for it to be considered as an unclaimed balance, it will depend on the type of account, whether it is a checking account or a savings account. For current or checking accounts, it will take an additional nine years on top of the one year that it will turn into a dormant account. So it will take nine years from the time when the account became dormant in order for it to be considered as unclaimed balance. For savings account, it will take an additional eight years from the time the account became dormant. So all of you, all you have to do is to uh, deduct from the 10 year period that is required to become uh, unclaimed balance. All you have to do is to deduct their year of dormancy. So that's one year with regards to checking accounts and two years with regards to savings accounts. Now, you might also ask, what will you do in order to remove the dormant status from your bank account? It's simple. All you have to do is to make a deposit to or withdrawal from your account. This will make your account active again. So simple as that. However, you will learn later on that if your account becomes an unclaimed balance account, then it's a little bit more difficult compared to if it is an account. Now let's go to dormancy fee. Previously, banks can impose a dormancy fee beginning from the month after the account became dormant. The dormancy fee would usually range from 100 pesos to 200 pesos. So it's a big uh, amount and it is usually charged monthly. However, BSP Circular Number 928 was passed to regulate this practice and provide a ceiling for the dormancy fee. And so we have this provision right here. So banks may only impose dormancy fee on a dormant deposit account five years after the last activity they're in, provided the following requisites are present. So first, the balance falls below the minimum monthly average daily balance or ADB, if any, and we consider that as the maintaining balance for our account. So the maintaining balance for our account differs from account to account. It may be 200 pesos, it may be 5,000 pesos, it may even be 10,000 pesos. So it depends upon the account that you open with the bank. One thing to note is if your account did not fall below the maintaining balance, you cannot be charged with a dormancy fee. The second requirement is that the monthly dormancy fee shall not exceed 30 pesos. So banks can only charge from a range of 1 peso to 30 peso monthly dormancy fee. And remember, they can only do that as long as all of these requirements are present. Finally, the third and last requirement, the bank complied with the two notice requirement prior to the charging of dormancy fees. Now, if you're going to ask what the two notice requirement is, then it is so. The two notice requirement presupposes that two notices must be sent to the depositor creditor prior to the imposition of dormancy fee. The first notice is a notice that informs the depositor creditor that his account is about to become dormant. The second notice is a notice that informs the said depositor creditor that his account is about to be imposed with a dormancy fee. So those are the two notices 
found in the two notice requirement. So we have here internal control measures. As a matter of policy, banks shall insert all efforts to prevent deposit accounts from becoming dormant, which is why banks encourage you to update your contact information with them. Because if something happens to your bank accounts, they can reach you through the contact information that you have provided. So if you keep changing cell phone numbers, if you keep changing your emails, or if you like to move from one place to another, it will give the banks a hard time to locate you and inform you if something will happen to your bank account. When an account is about to become dormant, the depositor shall be notified of its potential dormancy at least 60 days prior to the commencement of the dormancy period. So this is the first notice in the two notice requirement. The bank shall adopt appropriate internal control measures to ensure that all transactions affecting dormant deposit accounts are legitimate. When an account is about to be subject to dormancy fee, the depositor shall be notified at least 60 days prior to such imposition. And again, this is the second requirement to the two notice requirement. For unclaimed dormant deposit accounts considered for as cheap, the depositor of such account shall be notified at least 60 days prior to the filing by the bank of the sworn statement to the treasurer pursuant to the unclaimed balances act. So this is not part of the two notice requirement anymore. However, this is important in order for the unclaimed balances act to be implemented properly. So this is to inform the depositor what would happen to his bank account and to give him a chance to reactivate him, as well as to warn him that the government might cheat his bank account if he does not reactivate the same. Banks shall permanently retain records of cheated deposits together with proof of all relevant notices. So individual notifications shall be sent to the client's last known postal address, email address, contact number, either through postal or registered mail, career delivery, electronic mail, text messages, telephone calls, or other alternative modes of communication as may be elected by the client. So the client has a choice. How will the bank reach him if there is something important that they have to inform the client or the depositor of their bank account? So what happens to unclaimed balances? Deposits considered to be unclaimed balances shall be escheated in favor of the government. So if you're wondering what escheat is, escheat is a proceeding whereby the real and personal properties in the Philippines of a person become the properties of the state. And of course, since the government represents the state, technically speaking, it will now belong to the government. It is based on the principle that the state has ultimate ownership of all properties within its jurisdiction. While as street proceedings are usually done to obtain the properties of the deceased who left no will or legal heir, the law allows the same proceeding can be done to obtain money left by depositors in their inactive bank accounts that are deemed to be considered as unclaimed balances. So again, unclaimed balances or bank accounts that have been left there with no activity, whether deposit or withdrawal, for 10 years or more. So the government has to wait for 10 years of banking inactivity in order for them to file an escheat proceeding to the courts. However, even if they have filed an action of escheat to the courts, the depositor who owned that unclaimed balance can still recover the same, as we will discuss later on. So now, let us go to the question of the day. What is your favorite subject in school? For me, my favorite subject would have to be English. I like making stories when I was still young. Up to now, I still write stories. And it just so happens that all of my English teachers were awesome, and they really helped us improve in our English, whether it be writing or communicating or even speaking. So yes, my favorite subject is English. Okay, we have already defined what escheat is. Now let us go to the escheat process. 
the managing officers of the banks, building and loan associations, and trust corporations shall forward to the treasurer of the Philippines a sworn statement of all credits and deposits deemed as unclaimed balances. A copy of said sworn statement shall be posted in a conspicuous place in the premises of the bank, building, and loan association, or trust corporation for at least 60 days from the date of filing thereof. This is also to help the depositors be informed that maybe their bank accounts has now been considered as unclaimed balances. So even if they did not do anything to reactivate their accounts prior to the filing of this uh, sworn statement to the treasurer of the Philippines, they still have a chance to reactivate it. The treasurer of the Philippines shall inform the Solicitor General from time to time of the existence of unclaimed balances. So after the bank informs the treasurer of the Philippines, the treasurer will now inform the Solicitor General of the existence of unclaimed balances. So if you're wondering who or what is the Solicitor General, the Solicitor General is the one who represents the Philippine government in any litigation, proceeding, or investigation. So in short, it is or he is the legal counsel of the Philippine government. After the Solicitor General has obtained information from the Treasurer, the Solicitor General shall commence an action or actions in the name of the Republic of the Philippines in the Regional Trial Court of the province or city where the bank, building and loan association, or trust corporation is located. So now he will be filing a case. And this case is for a street proceedings. Service of process shall be made by delivery of a copy of the complaint and summons to the president, cashier, or managing officer of each defendant bank, building and loan association, or trust corporation, and by publication of a copy of such summons in a newspaper of general circulation published in the locality where the bank, building, and loan association or trust corporation is situated. If there be any, and in case there is none, in the city of Manila at such time as the court may order. So aside from delivering to the bank a copy of the complaint and summons, they will also publish the same in a newspaper of general circulation in order to further give a chance to the depositors whose bank accounts became unclean balances in order for them to find a way to reactivate it. So depositors are given lots and lots of chances in order for them to reactivate their account. So it does not mean that if the account becomes an unclean balance, you cannot anymore touch it. You cannot anymore recover it. You can still recover it until the final judgment of the court that that account will be escheated in favor of the government. So still in the escheat process, at the time of issuing summons in the action above provided for, the clerk of court shall also issue a notice signed by him, giving the title and number of such action and referring to the complaint therein and directed to all persons other than those named as defendants therein, claiming any interest in any unclaimed balance mentioned in said complaint and requiring them to appear within 60 days after the publication or first publication if there are several of such summons and show costs. If they have any, why the unclaimed balances involved in the said action should not be deposited with the treasurer of the Philippines as in this act provided and notifying them that if they do not appear and show costs, the government of the Republic of the Philippines will apply to the court for the relief demanded in the complaint. So even upon filing of the escheat proceedings, the depositor whose account has been transformed into an unclaimed balance can still recover it by informing the court that he has a claim to that said account by appearing before the court and proving that he has an interest or a claim in the said account. Now, it does not have to be that you are the owner of that bank account. What would happen if your parents have died and they left you with that bank account? So the name in the bank account is the name of your parents. It's not your bank account. However, you have an interest in that bank account as the child of your parents. And therefore, you have to show that to the court 
And after which, after hearing, they will order that your account that has been considered as an unclaimed balance shall be reactivated. And we'll, we'll discuss about that later on. So in this part of the provision, it gives the depositor a chance to be heard in order for them to reclaim their bank accounts that have been transformed into an unclaimed balance. So a copy of said notice shall be attached to and published with a copy of said summons required to be published as above. And at the end of the copy of such notice so published, there shall be a statement of the date of publication or first publication if there are several of said summons and notice. Any person interested may appear in said action and become a party thereto. So again, here is the escheat process. The banks informed the treasurer of the Philippines. The treasurer of the Philippines informed the solicitor general. The solicitor general files a case of his chief proceedings before the regional trial court. So within any point of this process, the depositor whose account has been transformed into an unclean balance can find a way to reactivate the same. So he still has a chance. And even if there is already a decision that his account will be escheated in favor of the government, as long as that decision has not yet become final and executory, he may have a chance to recover the bank account where he has an interest therein. So what will happen if the bank fails to submit the sworn statement informing the treasurer of the Philippines that they have unclaimed balances among their accounts. If the president, cashier, or managing officer of the bank, building and loan association, or trust corporation neglects or refuses to make and file the sworn statement required by this action, such bank, building and loan association, or trust corporation shall pay to the government the sum of 500 pesos a month for each month or fraction thereof during which such default shall continue. So we have discussed earlier that if your account has become an unclean balance, you can still recover the same. So this is how you recover it. And it is according to Treasury Circular Number 01, 2010. So the depositor or creditor shall request in writing to the bank that his account reported as unclaimed balances be reactivated. The bank shall authenticate and verify the request and the signature of the depositor creditor. The bank shall write the Bureau of Treasury requesting to reactivate the deposit account concern, attaching to its letter the stamp verified request of the depositor creditor. The bank shall execute a deed of undertaking, ensuring that the Bureau of Treasury shall be free from any liability once the account is reactivated. And finally, the Bureau of Treasury shall issue the authority to the bank to reactivate the account. So again, you submit a letter to the bank. It must be in writing. So you have to submit a letter to the bank to request reactivation of your uh, account. The bank will authenticate your request and your signature to make sure that it is you. So the bank will send a letter to the treasurer of the Philippines requesting to reactivate your account. And in that letter, he will attach your request letter that is verified by them. The bank shall then execute a deed of undertaking ensuring that the Bureau of Treasury shall be free from any liability once the account is re reactivated. And after that, the, the treasurer of the Philippines or the Bureau of Treasury will issue the authority to the bank that says that you can reactivate the bank account requested to be reactivated. And so that ends our lecture for today. These are my sources here on the screen right now if you want to check on them. And that is it for this video. I hope you have learned something today. I'll see you all again in the next one. Goodbye.